Good morning. As uh, Frank Blair indicated on the news report a little while ago, the uh, commander of the Army Forces here indicated this morning that the situation is under control. Mr. Conyers, uh, do you agree with that evaluation? Yes, I do. Uh, we got the first uh, generally quiet night in Detroit uh, since Sunday night. Uh, there was uh, hardly no incidents on the east side. Uh, there, there were some uh, confrontations on the west side, but I think that the prediction made yesterday that the back of the violence has been broken uh, and would be broken last night was correct. Do you feel you can make any prognosis? Well, I think that it's, uh, I think uh, we'll have the troops in for a couple days longer, uh, at least, but I think we're, we're in the uh, mop-up phase of the operation right now. You have been moving around steadily since the outbreak. Who are these people who have been arrested, charged with the rioting, the looting, the sniping? Well, most of the people, uh, as I can determine, are those who have, uh, are, are, are not generally known in the community, uh, I've described them as the economic have-nots in our community who have uh, risen to the surface, uh, not in a rebellion-like fashion because uh, all the activities, regardless of the intense sniper activity and the, uh, the fires that were started, uh, this is still obviously not organized to me. Uh, they're the people who uh, could uh, see that the only way that they had nothing more to lose than they had to gain. And uh, this spread. Uh, my uh, shock is that there are many more of these people than I thought. And of course, uh, this element was added to by, of uh, course, casual looters who uh, could not be described as economic have-nots. And then, of course, uh, we add to uh, that our uh, black nationalist element, uh, who uh, to me perhaps formed the hardcore resistance of this sniper activity. What have these people been telling you? Have they been giving you reasons? No, there, there, uh, there hasn't been that kind of dialogue yet. Uh, we know, however, that there was no uh, conspiracy, there's been no organization of some 4,000 people arrested uh, there hadn't been a leader among them. Uh, there have been, uh, uh, ironically, uh, the, the original snipers uh, uh, arrested by the police were white. Uh, even uh, last night, there were uh, two Negroes and a, a white, I'm sorry, two white persons and a Negro uh, working together, just breaking and entering. Uh, a white person was shot. Uh, the, the group was arrested. I think this uh, separates this from a race riot in the conventional sense. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, activity that has obvious racial overtones, but it is not organized, it is leaderless, uh, it's reacting to a mass feeling uh, that has been bubbling below the surface that says, we too, like most every major city, has a lot of work to do in this area. But essentially, these people you refer to as economic have-nots and who have been involved in this trouble are Negroes. Oh, that's true. Uh, uh, the majority of the people uh, uh, arrested and that have been participating are uh, Negroes. However, a number of whites have been arrested, but uh, uh, it is not the black-white confrontation that characterizes a race riot. There was no f fighting. Uh, there were no homes damaged except through fires and through incidental looting activities. But there were no attacks on anybody. Why did it happen here? Well, it happened here because, because Detroit, regardless of, of uh, our comparison with other cities, which I think uh, makes us look pretty well, uh, isn't, uh, isn't enough to those who have been so impatient and who have been waiting so long in the line for first-class American citizenship and opportunity. Uh, it's not enough to tell a person uh, who sees no way out of the economic box in which he has been born and raised and perhaps can even be a first or second or third generation resident in the slum 
that we're better than Chicago. But essentially, uh, hasn't the uh, whole matter of race relations in the state of Michigan been perhaps more advanced than uh, elsewhere? Precisely, but that's not the answer. We can't tell a, a person in the growing slums of Detroit that uh, you're better off, buddy, than Chicago, or you're better off than New York, or you're better off than Chester, Pennsylvania. He's not interested in that. He knows, and this is, the, this is why we can get this anywhere, and, and this uh, priority of cities is beside the point now. The ghettos themselves have to be looked into because that's where this frustration, uh, this cynicism, uh, this despair is erupting now. And it's, it's not a, the accumulation of a couple years or since World War II. I think that we're going to be able to look into this and find that uh, when you take 250 years of slavery, put 102 years of uh, second to tenth class citizenship according to where you've lived uh, created uh, in America a special Negro culture uh, segregated at all times except for a, a few general exceptions and a, a little tokenism type progress that you begin uh, building up this kind of resentment, this kind of humiliation, this loss of dignity, this recognition of powerlessness. Do you, are you implying, therefore, that this almost could not have been prevented, that is, in the sense of any specific legislation or something Absolutely like yes. I say that it could not have been prevented. Uh, passing a civil rights bill wouldn't have said anything to, the, to the answering the problem. As a matter of fact, this incident, like most of the others, started out of a very trivial matter of uh, law enforcement confrontation in the Negro community. It started off uh, on such a small level that there was original thinking that uh, this could be contained, that it could possibly be sealed off. But it caught, and, and, and it couldn't be. Then what do you do now as an immediate first step? Well, our first step, of course, is to secure and tighten down law enforcement and, and uh, uh, get the city restored to normal. Then I think uh, we should begin restoring the citizens, uh, both uh, private residential property owners and the businessmen who have been uh, hit uh, by this Holocaust. We incidentally, with respect to that, I ran into uh, Mayor Kavanaugh about 2 o'clock this morning. We were discussing the whole thing, and he indicated with respect to that that he's probably going to seek uh, federal disaster funds, I assume, for that purpose. That's true. We uh, know right now that, uh, and uh, I am urging the president in a direct communication to him very, very, in the next uh, hour, that we... Uh, uh, have him declare this uh, a, a disaster area so that we can begin to use uh, funds that are, are already set up without uh, additional legislation. Uh, I hope that we'll be able to do that. Another question is, uh, we had a couple of guests on yesterday, some of your colleagues in the House of Representatives, a Democrat, uh, uh, Congressman O'Hara from the uh, nearby district right here, a suburb essentially, and Congressman Goodell, a Republican. I saw the show. Yeah, and they indicated that uh, this is probably going to make it more difficult for Congress to enact uh, meaningful civil rights legislation, make it more difficult to go ahead with the plans for the poverty program. Uh, in other words, if anybody, if there was any purpose to their to all this disorder to stimulate Congress is having a reverse reaction. Well, Congress was, uh, had a reverse reaction before this began. That's what's pre precipitated this. But you before said that it was not an immediate uh, cause. It was hundreds of years it caused what That's this true. outbreak. That's and, true. And, and this problem, of course, is locked into the intractable attitudes of our government, including the entire Congress. Uh, we're, we're not willing to respond to the accumulated poverty, the unemployment, the loss of human dignity in any kind of meaningful way. Uh, we don't think it important enough uh, to pass a rat control bill as, as silly and simple. Well, would that have stopped this? 
no, we, we can't stop that, but we've got to begin acting like a government that is going to answer these problems. It's the accumulated attitudes that have been shown by our lack of concern over a, a, a poverty program on, of, the, of the magnitude that is really required uh, against rent control. We have literally no significant uh, housing program in this country. Uh, uh, model cities has been gutted. Uh, the lunch program for children uh, was uh, slashed uh, in item after item. Uh, the attitude of this government has reinforced in these people, in these, in our people's mind, the very fact that they aren't counted as very important in the whole scheme of things. Well, the uh, adverse reaction from these disorders will, it is generally believed, take the form of making it more difficult to enact the very pieces of legislation you say are needed. Well, I, I'm uh, unfortunately led to agree with you. Uh, these these uh, riots, and everybody has said it from the president and from uh, Martin Luther King down, uh, visit the most havoc upon the people who are the victims of them, of the Negro community uh, and its hopes and aspirations itself. But we can't continue to deal uh, with this situation on an emotional basis. We've got to look into the root causes, and it can't come from Negroes being asked to be good, and they will someday be led step by step down the road uh, to first class citizenship. We've got to recognize this color problem in America is as, as, uh, as significant and even more so than it was in the Civil War, than it was in, in the uh, Revolutionary War when the question of whether this country would be conceived all free or with slaves and free men, and that it's built up. This is the accumulation of it. I'm hoping that we're going to have the courage to look into the truth of the meaning of these things, and after we get through punishing the rioters, begin to look at the root causes which would cause so many Americans to take this fundamentally destructive course. Thank you very much for stopping by this morning. We've got a, a little breather in the overall situation, which, of course, made it possible. We have been talking here in Detroit with the Democratic Congressman John Conyers, Jr., in whose district most of the disorders have taken place. Now back to Today in New York.